good morning. Hey, today I wanted to share a quick story with you. I've been reading in Job, just to, I read in right now normally in three different places. Uh, I'm reading in Genesis, Job, and Matthew. And um, I just wanted to read a story that fits so well. Um, at one point, Job says, God's strong, I'm weak. God's right, I'm wrong. And I couldn't control him if I wanted to. And I, I, just have to, I just have to leave it in his hands. And it was that surrender. And that was maybe one of the high points during Job's suffering. He got griping and complaining a lot along the way, but none of us have ever been there, so don't get to be too hard on Job. But speaking of the, the hand of God, um, this is 1835. There is a group of trappers. And the Blackfoot Indians were the fiercest of, of the Western American tribes. They were known to the fur trappers as the Bugs Boys. And uh, the small party of trappers were camped in a ravine in the wooded hills. And two of the tra tra trappers went out to re retrieve their be beaver traps were attacked by about 80 Blackfeet. The trappers ran back to the camp with the Indians in hot pursuit. They returned fire. The Indians uh, backed off, but they didn't leave. Um, then the trappers dug foxholes while the Indians took to the heights around them, shooting down into the area where the camp was. This was uh, going on while the remainder of the Indians set fire to the grass upwind of the camp. With the Indians firing down on them and an inferno raging toward them, the trappers were in desperate strait. The Indians waited for them to break and run, for the, run from the fire so they could pick them off. But these men were tough, even in the face of these great odds, one of them, Osborne Russell said, we did not despair. The men could feel the searing heat of the blaze as it swept up the valley toward them. The men were low on ammunition, and they knew the real attack would come after the flames came to their camp. They prepared for the inevitable. Finally, the flames reached and completely surrounded the besieged men. The grass and trees all around them was consumed, but the dry grass within their camp refused to burn. However, the fire did clear the hillsides of trees for the Indians to hide behind, and the trappers took a dreadful toll on them. Finally, there was a lull, and the chief came forward and announced, quote, Today we fight no more, and he and his warriors turned and left. Of the miraculous blaze that refused to engulf their camp, Kit Carson said, I cannot account for the miraculous escape unless it was the protecting hand of providence. For the bush where we were was as dry as and as easily burned as that which had been consumed. And, and just the thought, there is a God in heaven, and uh, God, obviously there are people who were killed and people who were burned, and there were people who were not delivered. Um, the story of, of um, James having his head chopped off in the book of Acts is just a chapter or two away from um, Peter being released from prison. Why did James die and Peter didn't? All I know is there's a God in heaven who's good and there's a God in heaven who's faithful and we can trust him. Uh, dear, dear godly Christian man went to heaven um, this last week, uh, brother to one of our finest men and, and uh, someone that I knew pretty well and um, as good a Christian man as you'd know and why he went through the hardships and uh, battles uh, to be taken uh, young in life nobody knows except there is a God who is faithful and we need to trust him and uh, God is good and God is faithful and God is n he's not just just and holy in this perfect level of righteousness he's ever merciful he has tender mercies and we may see something as is unkind and 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 hurtful but God sees the whole picture and God knows and he's faithful. We can trust him. I'm reading today in, in Matthew chapter 11, and just a, a word or two um, about peace. Um, now, before I get to that, I just want to mention, there's some, there's some special needs here at our church, and, and uh, I would ask you to pray, and, and just to pray. Just take time to pray. Now, of course, there's always needs for physical work and people to help teaching and singing in the choir, orchestra, running buses. We need buses, and we need bus drivers, and we need all we have all kinds of needs. We need finan we have financial needs, of course, um, but we need we need prayer and we need people to go to God. Our buildings week after week are are full. There's always people. I think if the people in the overflow room uh, were in the auditorium, 
every seat would be filled. And um, it's just, a, it's a, what a blessing. And, um, and what do we do next is, uh, I don't know, well, we've got uh, plans for a building and a couple of million dollars probably to, to put that up. And if, if God's not broke. And so if you would pray that God would provide for that, along with that, we've got some immediate needs we want to take care of. Where, where I could use some money, some significant money. And I'm not talking about a $20. Thank the Lord for every $20 in widow's might. But if somebody had 1000 or 5000 and a bunch of somebodies uh, that could help, that would be a blessing. If you don't know about it, uh, give me a call. And uh, there's, some, there's some needs right away. But the big need, um, we, we've, got, uh, we've got some things. We just need God to, to do some work. But we trust that he knows where we are and, and what we need and, and all the details surrounding it. But um, anyway, if, if you feel a burden to be a help, I mean, pray, just pray, of course. But if you feel a burden to do more and you want to be a part financially in some of this, uh, feel free to call me and we'll talk about it. But um, reading in, in, in Matthew 11, I wanted to bring up this thing of rest. We are in a tense world. We're in a, you know, panic attacks, anxiety uh, stress, uh, heart problems due to stress. One doctor, one heart doctor said that most of the heart problems we have are due to stress. You know, they, they can say cholesterol and lack of exercise and all that, but, but you know what? There are some way overweight, lethargic people who don't exercise, whose hearts are fine. Um, and I've got a good friend who he's moved now, but I miss him often. Rarely, just rarely a week or two goes by. I don't think about him, but uh, he, he would cook meat on the grill and he'd just have a couple of pounds of butter and he'd turn the steak or pr uh, prime rib, whatever it is over. And he just take that cube of butter and just rub it over the top of that hot meat. <laughs> and, and his, his heart was fine. And, and, uh, his, but, um, stress is a big thing. And that the heart doctor said, in his opinion, most of the problems we had, when I had my struggle with my heart, uh, AFib and some difficulties. Uh, the first thing the doctor said, are you under stress? And I said, what a dumb question. Are you under any stress? Of course I'm under stress. We're all under stress. And the more uh, pressures on you from, you know, whether it be family, health, job, money, whatever, your responsibilities at work, um, that increases that stress. But, but this thing of rest, we need rest and, and we need to have that rest. Um, we need to have something that allows us to walk like the Hebrew, three Hebrew guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, into the fire, knowing whether God delivers us or not is irrelevant. He could. If he wanted to, he could. And if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to your old worldly ways. And we're going to do right if we burn. And uh, what a testimony, those guys. But I'd like to give you two things that have to do with peace and rest. And so in uh, Matthew 11, Jesus says in verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So he talks about rest. He talks about rest for your souls. And he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so I see two things. We could get more out of it, but two basic things here that help with rest. Number one, he says, take my yoke upon you. Verse 29, pick up the baton of what's important to me. A yoke, you know what a yoke is. If you had animals, it'd be a, a curved um, device, usually of wood and an oxen here and here, a mule or whatever. And, and they'd be harnessed into it. And, they, and that yoke is, would be on their shoulders and they would pull a plow or pull a wagon or whatever it might be. And Jesus says, take my yoke. The thing I'm trying to get done, you join in with me, join with me. And what it, he said, the son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost. You want to pick up the yoke of Jesus? Talk to people about him. Witness to people. Um, pick up a Sunday school class, at a bus route, go to a jail, go to a rest home and, um, and take his yoke. How, how about get a prayer list and um, on Saturday, go through every area of ministry you can think of, orchestra, choir, nursery, the children's Sunday school, the youth department, the Spanish, the Filipino class, the young adult class, the different adult classes. Pray, take time to pray and ask God's blessing. That's that's the Lord's burden. That's his yoke, is that this book would be put into the hearts and minds of people and that people would, first of all, get saved and then that they would get to, to know him and walk with him and follow him. That's his yoke. That's his burden. So if you want to find rest, first get a 
get a burden for what God is burdened for. It's because rest is and peace is inside. It's not external. It's internal. So first, he says, take my yoke. That's the first thing. And then he says, take my yoke upon you and, and in verse 29, learn of me. Learn of me. And then he starts giving some examples. I'm meek and lowly of heart. You'll find rest for your souls. Learn of me. So number one, pick up the yoke of God. Um, pick up the baton in prayer. During the week, take time, maybe every day, take a few minutes to pray over a certain um, ministry or take each day a staff member at church and pray for them. Um, Pray for your children and grandchildren that they would serve God. Uh, There are uh, the number of of churches closing every year in America is phenomenal. And I don't remember numbers if you know me very well. I'm terrible with it. But there are thousands of churches closed every year in America. And... um, and then many are, are turning liberal where they don't preach the gospel. Missionaries are coming home at a faster rate than they are going to the mission field. And so the world the world needs the gospel. Pray. Pray for your kids and grandkids. Pray. You could pray for my kids and grandkids. I'd be honored to have you join with me in prayer. Um, but pray. Take that yoke. Take that yoke and pray. Uh, during the church service, when I'm, when I'm not preaching and someone else is in our pulpit, I can tell you I am praying. I am praying that God would put a hedge about that place and give that the Holy Spirit would have liberty to work in people's hearts, that he'd give the preacher just the right words, the right illustrations, the right spirit as he preached. He, God knows what our people need. I don't know. And, um, but you could pick up that baton of prayer. In John 17, Jesus prayed for you and for me. And he said, I pray for my own disciples, but not just for them only. I pray on those who will believe on me through their name. That goes on and on through history. Um, Take that yoke. And then secondly, learn about him. One of the reasons that, that we worry is we, we don't know enough about God. One of the reasons we're frustrated, we don't know enough about the promises of God and what God said, I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And, and so many promises of God, um, wait in the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. And oh, there's so many verses, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. We've got a great God. And, and he is more than capable of caring for your problems and my problems. Now, so two things to find rest. Number one, pick up the yoke of God. Care about what he's, the field he's plowing. The field is the world in the parable explained. And he's out there plowing, trying to get people to get saved and to love on God. That's the great work of God. And secondly, learn about him. Become a Bible reader. And, uh, and, and, and I would just read. I just read and read and read. Um, and then one of the reasons I do these videos, um, I do a, an email, goes out three times a week, or most every day of the week, but not every day. Some days they get missed. It's, it's, I just told the secretary just when they get to you, but it's most days there's an email going out on some biblical truth. And then um, I do a podcast a couple times a week. And, um, uh, and then um, I do these videos that are on our YouTube. But, but boy, be in church and get around preaching and listen to good preaching and, and, and be careful not to just wander through the internet. There's so many heretics and crazies out there. But um, learn about God. Learn about his character, his nature. People who say, well, how could a loving God send someone to hell? You don't know enough about God or you wouldn't say something like that. Um, if, you've re- if you've read your Bible, you'd know that's a, that's a crazy thing to say. That is a, an uneducated comment. Um, that's just not the way that is. And so two things. Number one, take his yoke. Care. Care in the deepest recess of your heart. Care for what God cares for. And part of it is carrying some tracks and passing them out, but part of it is taking time to pray. Some of you don't get out very much. Take time to pray. Pray for people. Pray for ministries. Pray for our jail and rest home services. Um, Sunday, um, usually on Sunday after church, I go home and have lunch with the family. But I will bow my head in prayer, and it would be a rare time that I don't call out the, those in the bus route and those in the jail and those in the rest home, praying for them with whoever I'm eating a meal with, because that's his yoke. He loves those people. And, um, and, so, and, and give. You can give to these things. I'm concerned about the gospel getting to the world. I'm, I'm making financial commitments. And pray for your missionaries. Um, number one, uh, pray. Take up his yoke, pray and serve and witness and go soul winning and tell others and pray for the soul winning ministries. Number one, take his yoke. And number two, learn, just learn. We ought to be students of the word of God. And uh, no, don't be ignorant of an eternal book. Not when you can figure out how to turn the TV on. 
uh, we got a couple TVs in our house and, and, um, really neither one it's one of them I can't get to work I never know which there's four different remotes and and I don't know what to do with it um so obviously I don't watch it much but maybe the family's watching a ball game or whatever they they can get it going um the other one sometimes I remember how to get it on or not but I just don't watch tv much but if you can figure out the remote your tv you can figure out how to how to read the bible and learn about the most wonderful person in the universe and he's your heavenly father if you're saved and he says, I'd like you to know more about me and learn of me. And then I'll give you rest. That's a promise. And go through those verses, Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30, and you'll see rest and peace are the promises of God if you'll take his yoke and learn of him. Have a great day, and God bless you. Thanks for being a part of the ministry.